so manufacturers are now being expected to provide a 3D version or the, the digital version of, of their product so that that can then be used within a BIM model. So it's been quite a big upheaval for manufacturers, uh, quite a big challenge. A BIM object is, is a digital representation of a construction product. So that may be just purely the product data. So that's everything that a designer would need in terms of uh, looking at the specification. Um, it's also the information that an asset manager would need to be able to maintain that product. The, the reason that BIM objects are, are being used is because BIM is all about object-based modelling. So a, a designer or a contractor will be taking uh, objects. They may be using generic objects, which can be found often in you know, the BIM, BIM software. Or they may want to use a manufacturer-specific BIM object, which is a true likeness of their actual product. And that, that will provide them with the data they need to understand how that product performs and how it may be maintained. They may also provide a 3D version of that object so it can be inserted and used for you know, clash detection uh, with it within the model. What, what we've, we've done is developed a, a scheme which, which supports manufacturers with that process. And what we do is with the uh, BIM object kite mark we come into the manufacturer and we look at their processes and, and have their embedded BIM within their manufacturing processes. So I was talking about the product data. So that's a really important area. So what have they got within their manufacturing processes to standardise the production of their, of their product data? Having a standardised set of product data that's been structured well, that meets the requirements of, of the standard that we assess to. Uh, and we also look how, their, how their, their products are then created into a 3D version. So, whether, so if they're producing 3D versions of their, their BIM objects, how they're transferring that information to, to whoever's authoring it, whether it's them that's authoring it or whether a third party. And then what process they've got for maintaining it and checking that information and then working with the users of those, those objects to support them and which can give the the, the manufacturers a, a benefit of having that customer service. You know, it's really helped them to, to ensure that their processes are, their processes are, 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 are robust and also assurance that their, their objects are, are a real likeness of their, of their physical products. You know, it's one thing we do is we will check the physical products against the, uh, the 3D version if they've if created one. And we're also providing with the assurance that their data that they're providing is, is correct uh, as well, uh, which also provides assurance to the users of those objects. You could find that if you've based your BIM model on objects which are not accurate, you may find problems on, on site, whether it doesn't comply with the um, specification or, or finding actually that, that you have, you've got a clash that you, you didn't expect because there's some inaccuracies in, in, in the modelling. It's going to require more redesign on site. There could be quite a bit of waste involved, uh, added time to the, to the project. So we've aligned with the BS8541 um, standard, which is all about library objects. Um, we're also looking at um, BS1192 uh, Part 4, so looking at you know, minimum information that's, that's needed to maintain that, uh, that, that asset in the, in the future. But we've also, through our, our work with, with um, stakeholders, we've also identified additional areas that we've included um, on, on, on top of that to make sure you've got a, a, a really good um, BIM BIM content that's being produced. So what I'd ask um, is, is what assurance are you providing to users your BIM objects? So if you've already got BIM objects, how can you differentiate your products from others? And also, how can you as a manufacturer demonstrate to specifiers that you have embedded BIM within your processes and, and meeting the standards? If you've not yet got BIM objects, this is this isn't going to, going to go away and this is the route to get access to, to specifiers. The work we've done with the manufacturers so far, they've said that they've had to create objects because their specifiers are, are asking for them. So you know, there, there are thousands of BIM objects out there. Um, knowing which ones can, you can rely on 
Now, having the kite mark allows specifiers to have that because they can see that that uh, manufacturer's processes and that those objects have been reviewed to ensure that the, the data is, is correct and also the model represents the, their, their product um, accurately. So contact one of our BIM team and we will discuss with you to look at your scope of your certification. We can then book a gap assessment and we can come in, give you the help and advice in terms of where you are on your journey to, to, to meet the requirements of the kite mark. You can then look at going on to a, a formal assessment once you're, once you're ready.